Hello everyone, it's Kieran here at Magical Traveller. Hope you're having a great day. Uh, today I thought I would make today's video all about the incredible Rocky Mountaineer. Now, if you would have been following us for a while, you may have seen that um, around about kind of May last year, uh, myself and Phil were on board the incredible Rocky Mountaineer and honestly, it absolutely blew me away at the time we did it. Now, it's a really tricky thing. I've had all this kind of content, these photos, all these blogs I've wanted to write to kind of explain what it's like to do the Rocky Mountaineer experience. But honestly, I've never felt like I could do it justice because honestly, this is up there with one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, Rocky Mountaineer on their YouTube page have a really fantastic video where they generally interview people who are on board and they kind of say, how do you explain Rocky Mountaineer? And every single person just kind of goes, You, until you've seen it, you really can't do it justice. So I've never felt like I could honestly do it justice. So I've kind of had a whole year now to kind of process everything we got to see while we were on board Rocky Mountaineer. So I thought I would um, try my best, at least anyway, to give you a bit of an overview. I, I could never really go into the full detail because there's just so much for such an incredible journey. Um, but I thought I would do a very top level look at what, what Rocky Mountaineer is and how you can kind of partner that with a kind of land and sea extension holiday if you did want to explore kind of Canada and the Canadian Rockies. Now, I'm just going to show a quick video that Rocky Mountaineer have given us that I can share with you. And um, that just gives you a little bit of an overview of what it is like to experience the Rocky Mountaineer. So I'm just going to play that now for you. Moments in life that leave a lasting impression, like the feeling of movement as a new journey begins, or the sight of soft fur warmed by the morning sun. You might remember new flavors, the sound of an old friend's laugh, or a view that defies all expectations. These are the memories that stay with you long after the moments have passed. Rocky Mountaineer, all aboard amazing. So in case you weren't aware, that kind of gives you a very top level look at what, what Rocky Mountaineer is. It is a train journey that goes through the Canadian Rockies. They do also have a, now have a new service as well that goes through kind of the um, Denver Rockies as well. But I'm going to mainly focus on the Canadian version of this now because this is what Rocky Mountaineer is famous for. Now, this journey is incredible and there are four three different routes you could do in Canada, at least anyway, now in the new fourth one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just briefly interview, introduce kind of what the different levels of service are, and then I'll give you um, an overview of what we did when we were on board our experience last year as well, joining the Rocky Mountaineer. So just to kind of give you a quick overview then. So this is going to be the route we did, and this is the one I'm going to talk about in more detail today. Now, for every single one of these routes, you can do them both directions. So you can start in Banff and then head over to um, Lake Louise and kind of go down then into Vancouver. Um, or you can do it the other way around. So you can go from Vancouver right the way back to Banff if you want to as well. Um, each one of these... Um, the unique thing I think is probably best to get out of the way now as well with Rocky Mountain, you, you don't spend the night time on the train. So a lot of people think that kind of this is a through the night train journey as well. Absolutely not. What happens is, so in our example, anyway, we boarded in Banff and we made our way to Kamloops and then we got off the train and spent the evening in Kamloops. And then we boarded the train the following morning to continue our journey onwards. Now, the main reason why that is, is because the landscape is so beautiful. You do not want to sleep through any of it. So all their journeys have been designed that you are only ever traveling through daylight to obviously make sure that you make them most out of your journey whilst you are on board. So this was the journey we did. So this is going to be the, um, we got on board in Banff. You can also join in Lake Louise if you wanted to as well. And then this includes an overnight stay in Kamloops. And then we ended our journey in Vancouver, where we then joined um, our um, Holland America Alaska cruise. The other journey they offer as well is going to be Journey Through the Clouds. Now, this is a little bit further up. Um, so this then takes you from Jasper again with that overnight stay in Kamloops and then ending in um, Vancouver. Or again, equally, you can do it the other way around if you wanted to as well. Now, I forgot to mention, so I do have a little bit of an overview of what each one of these um, journeys offers. So if we just go back, sorry. Um, so looking now at the first patch of the West, and I'm going to read this because Rocky Mountaineer explained this better than I, I ever could. Um, but this journey follows basically the original passage of the Transcontinental Railway that links Canada from the East and West that originally opened in 1886. So this is going to be retracing that journey, basically, of the original train track that um, linked the East and West of Canada, or at least this coast of Canada, at least anyway. Now, you're going to be traveling through fertile farmlands um, of the phase of uh, the Fraser Valley, right the way through the desert-like interior landscapes and onto the Craggy Peaks glaciers of the wilderness of the Canadian Rockies. This route definitely does take you through the heart of the wilderness of the, of the West. And that's the thing that I enjoyed. The landscape completely changed as you're going through. You kind of start off in Vancouver, through the kind of all the farmlands, the lakes lands, all the way up then through as you enter into the Rockies and into the kind of the glacier um, cap mountains. Honestly, it's a beautiful journey. 
So then moving on then as well then to Journey Through the Clouds. Now, we didn't do this one. And if we were going to go back, this is probably what we would do next. Rocky Mountaineer themselves say that if everyone's going to do it at least once in their lives, then they probably should start with First Passage to the West. It is the quintessential one. And it's the one that's going to give you a little taste of everything that the Canadian Rockies has to offer. But Journey Through the Clouds. So this route travels through the scenic valleys, the coast mountain range of the Fraser Canyon with its white water rapids and dramatic landscape before heading north to the Albreda Glacier and the Pyramid Falls. The highlight of this route is the majestic Mount Robson, the highest peak in the Canadian Rockies. So again, this journey, again, you can either join it in Jasper, have your overnight stay in Kamloops and then end in Banff. It doesn't end in Banff, sorry, it ends in Vancouver. The, the graphic doesn't match what the map does. Um, or equally the other way around as well. You can do Vancouver, stay in Kamloops, go to Jasper. The great thing about this is as well, you can also pair these together or do them back to back as well. So you could obviously do um, Journey to the West, sorry, First Passage to the West, sorry. So you could do Banff all the way down to Vancouver and then join then Vancouver right the way back to Jasper if you wanted to. But you've also got then as well Rainforest to Gold Rush and some people do this as one big grand circle loop as well. So now this is the longest stay you have. So this does include your two nights um, journey on board as well. So this is the longest journey you can have on Rocky Mountaineer. Now this starts again either in Vancouver or Jasper and then takes you to Quenelle and then also to Whistler. And this is going to be one of the better ways as well to kind of get to Quenelle because it's a little bit remote as well but it's a gorgeous kind of um, wilderness town as well located in, in British Columbia. Now, just to, if I can find it now as well, so the little overview of Rainforest, I don't have that to hand. I've got it on here. So one second, let me just get back to it. Uh, here we go. So then, yeah, Rainforest to Gold Rush then, starting out in our North Vancouver station on the West Coast in Continental Rainforest. And that's the thing as well, sorry, you do go through an actual rainforest, and this one is the only rainforest, I believe, in North America. Um, so again, you get to experience that kind of really varied climate, climate as well, which is what these routes are for. You get to experience kind of all the different um, temporal climates as well within the Canadian Rockies. Um, so as I say, yeah, you do start off then in the um, West Coast um, coastal rainforest, and then it climbs up into the alpine climate then, and then onwards to the vast ranch lands um, of, the of the Caribou pl um, Plateau. Um, and then you go through the Rocky Mountain Trench, and then you finally end in the largest national park in the Canadian Rockies as well. So again, really, really incredible. This one is one that they do recommend for people who have maybe experienced the other routes, um, and you kind of want to try something different. Now, I've heard from somebody who works for Rocky Mountain who said that um, this route is his favorite just because you do get that really varied climate as you go through type of thing. You go in from kind of, you know, potential glacier fields, depending on the time of year you do, right the way through then as well to kind of that rainforest. So again, really, really incredible if you want to kind of max maximize your time on board and experience everything that Rocky Mountaineer has to offer. And then this is the third, the fourth route, sorry, this is a new route. So I've not done this personally, but then this is as well, then going to be taking you through the kind of Colorado Rockies as well then. So you can kind of start off um, in Denver with an overnight stay then in Glenwood Springs and then going on then through, through to Moab or equally you could do it the other way around as well. So this is fantastic if you maybe somebody wants to go and explore kind of new town Colorado by foot um, and then you want to take a train, train journey as well then. Don't forget you can do these back to back as well. So you can book one direction and then go back the other direction as well. I don't have a lot of information on that one just because it's a relatively new route. So I'm still kind of getting really uh, my feet into that one. I've just spent a lot more time learning obviously about the Canadian routes because that's what we've experienced as well. Now, just to explain the difference as well. So Rocky Mountaineer do have two levels of service. They have silver leaf and gold leaf. Now I'll be completely candid. Both of them are fantastic premium you know they're high-end luxury service you do generally get door-to-door -door service so kind of you get picked up by coach service to take you to the ship uh, to the train even sorry and then literally it's door-to-door -door from the train to your hotel overnight you're staying in kind of four star plus hotels each night the food service is completely elevated and tailored to kind of the regions you're going to be um, traveling through so regardless of which one of these you pick you're going to have a fantastic time however there are different perks depending on which service you do pick the main ones that I'm going to pick out on, and you'll see in the video content I share later on of kind of us on board, um, when you book Gold Leaf, you are going to be in that bi-level dome with seating above and the dining room below. So when you are in Gold Leaf, you do have kind of the um, top level biodome with the kind of got floor, almost kind of um, full wraparound um, windows for you to look out into the environment. And you're going to sit there while you are enjoying the landscape. But then when it comes to your meal service, you will go down to a dedicated dining room. If you do um, Silver Leaf, you will be dining in your chair as well. And it doesn't have kind of the floor, not floor to ceiling, but it's kind of like um, the ceiling anyway, full wrap around windows above you. You have kind of standard, they are larger windows than you would find on your typical train. 
but that's going to be the main difference. You will be in your seat for the whole duration. The other thing as well is it doesn't include an outdoor viewing platform on Silverleaf. So if you go Silverleaf, you kind of are in that carriage the entire time. Goldleaf does have, and again, I've got some video from that in a second I'll share with you, but it does include an outdoor viewing platform as well. And the food and the drink service is a little bit more elevated as well if you are going to book gold leaf. So you're going to have regular drink service consistently at kind of all the way through, whereas silver leaf, you kind of get them at peaked at select times. So as part of the journey, they'll come around and do a fixed drink service, whereas gold leaf, they regularly give you drinks. And because me and Phil were kind of at the front as well where the crew were working, we, we kind of got a lot of drinks <laughs> by our hosts as well. Um, and you get more hosts as well. So you're kind of going to get a little bit more insight into it and that the kind of better attention to care while you're on board. But again, I don't. I want to stress, Silver Leaf is still a fantastic way to do this. Just Gold Leaf is a little bit more um, elevated. That seat as well. So you're going to have like a heated seat on um, Gold Leaf and it's going to be a full, not full recline, but it's a reasonable recline type of thing. Um, whereas it's, it's the seat still Still nice but it's not as nice as what if you are going to look on silver leaf um and then again as you can see there just the snack service again you're going to have fantastic service on both of them anyway so don't think like you're going to be missing out if you do decide to go to silver leaf but at the moment as well the price to upgrade to gold leaf isn't actually that bad as well so don't think you're missing out on it and don't be afraid to book silver leaf but every all the pictures i will show you are going to be of the gold leaf experience now, this is how our journey began, at least anyway. So we did this last, I think it was the end of April into May. So we spent a few nights into Banff. Um, so we spent some time exploring Banff. I could talk about Banff for hours as well. It's incredible. And I may do another one of these sessions just on Banff and the surrounding area. But we started our journey in Banff where we kind of joined the Rocky Mountain at least anyway. Now, what I'm going to do is I, I film a lot of this content as if I'm ever going to do vlogging and I never get around to using this content. But I'm going to share a video of me literally the day we were joining Rocky Mountaineer, just to kind of explain to you what happens when you first um, get on board, at least anywhere, how you get on board the uh, the train, and this should hopefully give you a bit of an overview of the level of service you're going to be getting. So it's officially time. We are just getting ready to head off to join the Rocky Mountaineer. Um, we have just checked in here now at Elkin Avenue, which is the hotel they're using for kind of check-in for the train. Um, so we're staying just around the corner in Banff Park Lodge. And what we had to do was come here yesterday to kind of check in, um, do all our health documents and our passport check and things like that. And then they gave us our kind of luggage tags and our boarding passes ready then for today. So literally we just came here straight away. They took our suitcases and um, we're ready to kind of get on board. Just got to wait for the bus to come and collect us to drop us the train depot um, so we should be leaving in about 20 minutes time hopefully um, just for a short train uh, bus journey even to join the Rocky Mountain just at the road but just taking in these views one last time because just look how incredible this is we've been so spoiled with these views just absolutely there you go just to see as well how dramatic the sky is kind of kicking myself a little bit so yesterday morning we were a bit jet lagged and we got up incredibly early to kind of watch uh, the sunrise and it was overcast the whole morning so i've got about two hours worth of footage of just literally no clouds moving no sun coming up because it was hidden behind the clouds and then this morning when i had to get up and do some work just to kind of catch up on things um unfortunately the sky is absolutely gorgeous look how dramatic that sky is with that gorgeous sun coming over the mountains so I missed out on that unfortunately so you don't get a lovely time lapse of barren from the mountains get a grey one instead so look forward to that one but yeah so guys just thought i'd give you a quick update here we are now like i say elkin avenue for the check-in um there's loads of hotels you can stay in as part of your rocky mountaineer um, package if you wanted to um and then you just like i say have to do come here then to check in beforehand um and this is then the meeting point then where they join everybody then to join onto the, um, the train in a bit so other than that guys hopefully we'll see you in a bit on the train take care so yeah, that was just as we were about to board um, onto the train anyway. So you do go to the hotel, you do your check in there. This was during COVID as well. So we did have to kind of do our COVID check as well and just our home health declaration to get on board the train as well. Really seamless from that point onwards as well when the team are incredibly attentive. And like I said, that service begins from the second you kind of join the experience. Let me pop the slides back in. So this then is just good to show you then. This is the gold leaf carriage then as well. So as I mentioned before, it's better to explain in pictures. You can see there those kind of floor. They're not quite floor to ceiling, but they're as good as you're going to get. So from kind of from chair to ceiling, at least anyway, um, full um, wrap around windows you're going to have. And then you can see that really gorgeous, comfortable seat there as well. Now, if you see the little panel on the seat, that's what's going to be um, in, going to work your recline um so that's obviously where you can put the foot rest up if you wanted to kind of relax and sit back as well but it also has a seat warming feature as well so we were traveling kind of at the start of the season i think we were on like the second or third train of the year and this was the second train after they resumed after covid as well so we were really really lucky to kind of get back on board this and, and experience this 
lovely way you've got loads of room as well so kind of plenty of leg room in front of you as well so you can obviously yes recline those seats and get that full relaxation on board and you could just see that how happy i was i was absolutely smitten at the fact that we had the chance to do this as well and then the way it works with meal service then because as i mentioned you do have that two floor system as well so because we were in group one as they like to call us the front of the carriage we had second service for breakfast so what happened was we were kind of upstairs so we got to relax they gave us a drink service so i started the first of many cocktails which had a dark and stormy or the rocky mountaineer version of a dark and stormy anyway which was incredible and then we had kind of some light bites and some coffee and some pastries as well while we kind of waited then for our full breakfast service which i'll touch on food in a second as well um but just again so we got to sit back and relax and for the beginning of our journey we made our way then from kind of um, Banff up to Lake Louise now if you wanted to stay in Lake Louise you can also join the Rocky Mountaineer in Lake Louise as well if you wanted to it's about you miss out on say say 30 40 minutes of the journey if you do choose to do that but it is going to be kind of the start of the journey anyway so you're not missing out on the best highlights of it but it's just to make you aware that you can totally join in Lake Louise which again if you want to stay in the Fairmont Chateau Lake Louise you can totally do that um, it just means that you've got two different joining options for kind of this end of the trip anyway. You can also do the other way where you can get off at Lake Louise if you do want to stay in the Lake Louise area. Um, but I personally think it's just nicer to stay in Banff. There's more choice and you've kind of got a really good jumping off point to explore all of the kind of Banff National Park area. Um, and then again, that kind of snack service then was throughout the whole day, the drink service throughout the whole day as well. They were just constantly, you know, as soon as we were finishing a drink, we were being asked if you want another drink. And obviously me and Phil were totally down for drinking as much as possible while we were on board. And then, as I say, we were then led down. I don't think I've got full all pictures of breakfast, but this is kind of just a little snippet. This is fine dining at its best type of thing. This isn't kind of trained food. You're going to see elsewhere. This is fine dining. And all the food as well is completely regional. So you're going to have regional meats, um, regional fruit and veg. You're going to have kind of regional spins on things you may know as well. Um, so a, an example I can give was the Bloody Mary. Now, I don't drink Bloody Marys, but they were using clamato juice rather than tomato juice, which is, again, it has a little bit of... Um, a fish in it, I believe, kind of blended up into it as well. So it's kind of, it is a very Canadian version of a Bloody Mary. So you're going to get lots of little touches like that throughout it as well, and kind of lots of maple um, and pecan and things like that as well. So really, really great. The menu was incredible. They dealt incredibly well with Phil's gluten allergy. We, I don't think we told them ahead of time. They were just ready for it. They had options um, for gluten-free dining. Now you do get two meals typically included. So you get your breakfast and you get your kind of midday meal. Um, I'm not going to say which one it is because I call it dinner and everyone else calls it lunch. But, <laughs> um, but you do get your midday meal included as well on every day that you are on board the train. Your evening meals then are usually at your hotel at your expense. We were delayed getting in, which I'm not going to go into because it was nothing to do with Rocky Mountaineer. It was down to a train breaking down ahead of us. So we were delayed by about three hours on the train. Now, what I thought, thought was incredible was the train team whipped up a whole other meal for us on board and served all of us as well on board for that evening meal as well because we wouldn't have gone into Kamloops until about, I think it was like eight, nine o'clock at night. So they just wanted to make sure that we all had something to eat just in case we didn't get a chance to get out and find something to eat in Kamloops. But again, that's the level of attentiveness and care you're going to have whilst you are on board. There was a bit of a debate about whether they were going to kind of stop us to catch up and then we would take the bus over instead. But the decision was made for us to stay on the train and have more time on the train. And again, I really appreciate the fact that they did that because the crew then had to work longer that journey as well as the evening. Um, so again, really, really great and a really lovely chance to kind of experience that more time on board as well. Speaking of which, so I've got another video. So when we were stopped, we were stopped here for about two hours, um, but I got a really nice chance to kind of film some footage of the outdoor viewing area of um, Gold Leaf Service, which normally would be quite windy, so you wouldn't be able to hear much. Um, so I'm just going to play a quick video just to show you what that's like and just to give you a sample of some of the scenery that we got to see while we were um, stopped off um, in that little place where we had a little break. So we are just stopped for a brief moment now while we wait for a freight train to go past. So I just thought this was a great chance to kind of take a moment just to show you um, one of the perks of being kind of on gold leaf service here on Rocky Mountain here. You do obviously um, have the dual layer um, kind of lower floor gr ground uh, upper floor viewing platform that you can see um, in the other video content. But this is a kind of a little extra area you have, which is an outdoor viewing area, which is really cool. So kind of you can come out here, get a bit of fresh air if you wanted to but also then just kind of get a lower level connection to uh, the environment, the area around you. So we've just stopped off here by this gorgeous river with the mountains just there in the distance. So I just thought I'd come out and have a little look around and then show you guys around as well. So you this side here, this side's a little bit closer to the trees. And then like I say over this side then, it's this really gorgeous river, which I've just been filming quite a lot of, just really relaxing while we're waiting for the 
trains come on. I believe we'll wait for a freight train just to pass over. So um, there is only single tracks in some sections. So kind of tram trains have to pass and make way for each other. So we're just waiting for that. But we've just had breakfast now in the uh, breakfast dining car. Car. Ooh, I'm in the way that way. Go that way more even. So you can see the train up ahead there. Again, I will never tire of these views. Like these views are immaculate. So let me just see if I can change there. There you go. So yeah. Just to get your bearings as you come in, so that's kind of as we came in onto the train there, and then just through there, then is where the dining car is. So on the lower level down through there, the dining car, and then you go up the stairs then into the kind of panoramic seating area where we spend most of our time, and that's where they serve kind of snacks and food and drink and things like that as well while we're dining. Um, just because of the size of the dining car, they do split you into first seating and second seating. So we were first seating, so we had breakfast as we come on board, but then if you are second seating, um, then you are served snacks and a kind of pastry at your uh, chair as well while you wait. So it's not like you go without, um, you actually get extra breakfast. So it's kind of a perk of being, having to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, I just thought I'd share that with you, this really cool viewing station here. I'll try and come back out again when the train's actually moving, but I just thought this is a great time now that I've got a bit of time to set up and more do a kind of 360. I thought I'd do that now while the train's stationary. This is just great, isn't it? So there you go. There's a little look at that. And again, I was just, I was overwhelmed the entire time we were on board. Like every moment was a highlight for us. Um, so again, this is kind of showing you a little bit more than of what that seating car looks like. I didn't take many pictures because it's quite small and intimate as well. And you do share your table with other guests as well. So we did spend a lot of time just chatting to other people, asking kind of why they chose um, to do Rocky Mountaineer. Um, but I do have this little clip which hopefully we'll play over this, which shows you. So these are the people who sat next to us. It just shows you this is how incredible it is. You're sat there dining your meal with these gorgeous views. Now, this was overlooking um, a valley. Now, I can't remember the name of every single landmark we went past because we went past so many. And your host will explain to you kind of what the region is and the history of the region and kind of the culture locally. Um, but while we were dining, we didn't hear any of that talk. But again, just the views you get are absolutely incredible while you are kind of sat in your chair. Um, so there's that. And then let's go back and add this back in. And again, as I mentioned there, so there's one of our, so there's Anton, one of our guests as well, um, one of our hosts, sorry, who did again, did a fantastic job of explaining kind of, you know, all the rivers nearby, the wildlife, things like that. What you also get as well, let me just take that out, is you do get, you get quite a lot of literature when you're on board. So you get to keep this afterwards if you wanted to, which is the newspaper for your journey. But it does a fantastic job of giving you tons and tons of information as well on kind of all the wildlife you'll see, all the different foliage you'll see, the history of the region. Um, and it gives you a full breakdown map as well of kind of um, all the landmarks you're going to see because we saw so many and I still can't remember half the things we saw. The few bits and pieces do stand out in my mind, but there were so many mountains, so many rivers, so many bridges. But there we go. There inside, there's a fantastic map of all three routes as well. And every single one of those little dots is a landmark of some sort that you would have seen. So um, again, most of these they call out and they tell you about them all. So you kind of get a little bit of an insight into kind of what each one of these is. Um, honestly, yeah, oh, I'm so... I'm, this is why I really struggle to do this journey justice because it's such an incredible journey and there's so much to take in. Um, when people were saying like, do you really spend two days on a train? What is there to look at? The landscape changes generally every half hour. You're seeing so many incredible things. And the guys do such a fantastic job of bringing the region to life as well that honestly, I, I could have been on board for five days and I wouldn't have got bored. So again, these are pictures taken during that little stopover we had as well. So just kind of show you how incredible that is and just that connection to the outside space, which you wouldn't normally get if you did book Silverleaf. Now, this was a big, big milestone as well. So this is the last peg, I think it's called. I forgot what it's called, the last stop. Um, so as those two rival train companies were trying to kind of compete with each other to be the first to create this kind of transcontinental um, railway between kind of the two different coasts, um, they were competing with each other to do it. And they kind of realized halfway through that there's no point in competing. They might as well pair up. So this was then the last peg that was put into this, or the last stake even that was put into the ground to join those two different rail tracks together to create then the one single rail route um through the canadian rocky so this is kind of the landmark that you go past the train does slow down just a little bit to kind of give you a bit of time to take a picture of it um but as you can see there there are people as well who kind of travel from nearby to view this landmark but you get to kind of go past obviously on the train tracks that recreated and um, that historic moment of connecting those two different routes as well so that was really nice that's probably the one landmark that stood out for historical purposes um, just because obviously it's very symbolic of the journey that you are on but there are tons of kind of natural landmarks around as well um 
So this is Thompson, I believe his name is. He is the engineer bear, so he's a Rocky Mountaineer mascot. In fact, he's always here behind me because he's a very lovely bear, and we were given him by the Rocky Mountaineer team. Um, you can't get him anymore on board. They've changed him to a different one. I forgot what the other bear's name is, but there's a different bear on board. So when we actually took him with us, the guys were actually quite surprised we had one because they were saying, like, you can't get these anymore. Um, but there's loads of merchandise as well. We've got quite a bit, actually. We bought quite a bit. But if you... um. We bought like a, um, a snow globe, a bauble, and they didn't understand what we meant by a bauble because the Canadians don't use the word bauble, they use ornament. Um, but we've got quite a lot of uh, merchandise on board, but this is one we took with us and he kind of went with us throughout our whole journey. And there's a, there's a whole album. I could probably have a separate Instagram account for all the photos that he appears in. Um, but again, just to show you the varied landscape and as I kind of show you some pictures from day two, you'll see how varied it is. But we went the start of the season, so it was still quite, you know, the, there was still glacier runoff happening as kind of the snow was melting off the mountains. There was a lot of fog and it was quite an overcast and rainy day as well. In fact, I've got a really cool video somewhere here we go i've made a load of videos so this is um a video from this day that shows you just kind of the weather was a bit overcast but the journey was no less and off you want to hear that so again there's me with the cocktail just going through the mountains as well and again this is just a little snippet of everything you see while you are on board and like i say the landscape is constantly changing i'll hopefully showcase that with a few other snippets i've got but just sat there with, again, another one of my kind of Rocky Mountain New versions of a dark and stormy. Just absolutely enjoying that gorgeous landscape as it goes past. So there's that one. And then I have this as well, which I think is from day two. But I'll just quickly show you the difference. So again, you're going past so many different rivers, so many different landscapes. There's ample choice to see wildlife as well. They just obviously can never guarantee what wildlife you see. We did see a bear very quickly. So what will happen is the train driver will shout down. So obviously he's quite far ahead. I think one of the clips later on shows you just how big the train is. Um, and again, the train length varies by the season and how many trains. Sometimes they do join two trains together. So if you're doing those two different journeys from Jasper to Banff for, for day one or day two, you could be joined together with another train who's also joining you for that same journey. So the train length does vary um but the um driver will shout down to the rest of the trains or the host so they know if there is any wildlife and um, we saw lots of birds we saw lots of gophers lots of goats things like that we did see a bear quite briefly it was the start of bear season um but we saw one who when he saw the train coming did start running away from the train um so by the time we got the cameras out all we saw was just the back end of the bear disappearing back into the trees type of thing so we didn't get to get any great photos of any of bears, but we did see one bear very briefly on this journey um, and I will touch upon seasonality at the end of this as well, because there is a season, um, depends on what you want to do, there is definitely a different season for it. Um, and then, yeah, as I mentioned, you do get your overnight on Kamloops. Now, if you definitely check out the rest of the YouTube, there is a video um, of the hotel we stayed in in Kamloops. Um, again, it's not going to be anything fancy, but it's a really lovely hotel. And I think I took it out. Sorry, there was a picture of what the view was like in the morning. We had a gorgeous view of look in the hotel. And again, this is door to door service. So they quite literally pick you up from the drop off point of the train, take you to the hotel, drop you off straight outside. Your luggage is carried through all the way through for you. Usually in our case, it wasn't because we were late, but they still took it all through to um, the hotel for us as well. We just had to collect it from the lobby. Um, normally it's dropped in your room for you when you're ready so you don't have to worry about that type of thing but again just because of the the time delay on that we had to kind of take our suitcase ourselves but again that's a, this is such a first world problem um and again equally the next morning then as well you have your breakfast on board the train so you do get up and get off i think it's like eight o'clock i believe eight eight thirty we had to be out and on the coach um and then take you straight to the train then again then and what happens is you split service then so if you were first on day one you were second on day two and vice versa just to make sure that it's fair for everyone but again you are given those warm pastries snacks and tea coffee service or if you want an alcoholic beverage for breakfast you can do that as well day two blew me away honestly i think day two was my favorite maybe because the weather was a bit brighter as well so we got to kind of see more of kind of those really warm and um, bright lovely gorgeous days um but we were going past lots of lakes lots of rivers i think not on here but on my instagram i posted a bit of the lake we went past and oh generally i got quite emotional i went out to the outdoor viewing platform and had a look out and generally wept a little bit because i was just like this is such a special and incredible experience um i couldn't get over just how overwhelmed i was by how beautiful this surrounding area was um so i can't remember what some of these oh here we go i found it so this is then the lake that we went past which because the landscape was so different we went through a lot of kind of um forests and a lot of kind of glacier cap mountain or snow cap mountains and you can see how big the train is there in the distance actually this was really emotional as well to kind of see this and this was a very different landscape and i was kind of like wow okay we're going through a whole different region now we were a bit more arid um a bit more kind of um, rural and rugged as well so that was absolutely gorgeous but again this is the same day and this is just literally a few hours later then 
this is how the landscape changed as well. So again, this was a roaring river. So obviously this is all the ice runoff as well then from the top of the mountains coming down then to kind of join these rivers. And again, we followed this river for a good two hours or so. But again, so many bridges we saw, lots of freight trains. There was loads of tourist attractions along the way. Oh, honestly, it was just absolutely incredible. But again, those really gorgeous um, mountains as well to look at. The skyline was incredible. Just wonderful. Um, honestly, this is such a fantastic way to explore the Canadian Rockies. And then I think I've got one more video clip. I got two more, but I got one more anyway of showing you just the journey in general, um, which is more of the same, I believe. I took a lot of time lapse of this because <laughs> I was like, how can I take in as much as possible of this journey? Um, but yeah, just the landscape was incredible the entire time we were on board. So there you can just see the more open fields. We went past multiple lakes. I've got footage of lakes. I don't have any in this um, presentation, but beautiful lakes we went past as well and again all the time you're doing this and as well your host are kind of explaining to you kind of the the history so when we past one of the lakes they explained that it's a very big recreational area for locals as well so they will go there for the summer holidays they'll take up vacation homes and things like that all around the lakes as well so just really lovely to kind of get that local insight into it as well not just the wildlife but also the local culture as well um, so let me pop this back in and see how many slides I've got left. This gives you an idea then as well. So this is going to be the front of the train. So me and Phil were literally sat just in front of this. So that's where our hosts were. So we were really up close to them. So we got to spend a little bit more time chatting to our hosts than maybe some of the other guests got to. But that's also where kind of then you're going to have your meal service as well. I'm sorry, your cabin service. That's where the drinks are going to be served from and things like that. Um, so it's just to show you how beautiful this cabin is as well. And kind of that, like I say, the ceiling windows and how the, that amazing connection you have at least anyway to the um, surrounding environment from you it's it's uninterrupted views all all the way through your journey and again like i say so many wonderful landscapes i can't remember what this one's called it does have a name it's got some historical culture i just can't remember sorry i'm sure if i read through the guide here i probably recall but there's so many bridges as well so many beautiful waterfalls you would think you would get overwhelmed and i did a little bit get overwhelmed because there were so many amazing landscapes but just as soon as you kind of think you've seen everything the landscape just changes again and you're seeing something completely different as well so again beautiful chance for photography if you like landscape photography or taking pictures of kind of wildlife again ample opportunities on board as well to do that um before i do this i'm just going to show you as well then just to show you the level of kind of just how inviting i can't stress again how welcoming and inviting all the um, guys are on board Rocky Mountaineer. I was really taken aback by just how um, welcoming, accommodating the guys were, and I cannot fault the service on board Rocky Mountaineer. It is impeccable service. But just as we were, as we um, as we kind of traveled away on the train, but also as we arrived into Kamloops, even at, I think we got in quite late, like three, four hours late, even as we were arriving in late, we still had this level of enthusiasm from the rest of the Rocky Mountaineer team. <laughs> So as we were pulling into Vancouver at the very, very end of our journey, which I was obviously very sad about, again, all the and the crew were kind of out there lined up along the train tracks, waving to you to welcome you in or to wave you off at the beginning of the end of your journey as well. They literally roll out the red carpet, no exaggeration. They roll out the red carpet for you to kind of get on and off the train. The level of service and attention to detail by the guys at Rocky Mountaineer is incredible. I cannot rate this experience high enough. It is, you know, five, six star plus level of service the entire time you are on board. Now, to talk about seasonality, now we did spring. So that's what this slide was referring to. Sorry. So we did spring. Now, spring is going to be a fantastic time if you want to kind of go. The, the, the There is no real cheap season with Rocky Mountaineer. However, the cheapest side of the season is going to be spring or the very end. So basically the beginning or the end of the season. Spring is going to be just as all the mountains are going to be starting to melt. So you're going to have snow-capped mountains. It's not the best for wildlife. However, you are going to get those really dramatic rivers. You're going to get roaring rivers because obviously all the ice melt is running down the mountains. So it's a really great time for kind of dramatic rivers and kind of seeing all those amazing snow-capped mountains. I'm really glad we got to see in that time of the year because the landscape was beautiful. If you're going to go in summer, that's when you're going to get the most daylight. So you're going to be able to kind of do more wildlife spotting and see more of the environment. Kind of as we were pulling in at the end of our journey, it was getting to dusk type of, type of time of year. It's also going to be a chance to see a lot of wildlife as well during the summer months. And that's going to be kind of salmon season comes towards the end of summer and the beginning of August as well. So if you kind of want to make sure you're going to see bears, then definitely look at kind of the salmon run season because that's when the bears are going to start coming down from the mountains more and be closer to the rivers to try and obviously catch all that salmon that is doing the salmon run. 
However, then you go into the autumn season and they'd say it is really tricky to kind of time this because it changes along the route as well. So if you kind of join um, during autumn, you've got the chance then to see the fall colours coming in then as well. So you get the environment is going to completely change from all that kind of spring, fresh colours to the autumn fall colours as well. Then as the leaves are kind of turning colour as well. So the landscape will look completely different as well than if you do decide to do in autumn. So. I get asked all the time of is there a best time to see it and absolutely there is no best time to see it they're all fantastic for different reasons wildlife is going to be the summer months the fall colors are going to be in autumn spring is going to be the start of the season but you're going to have those fantastic snow capped mountains with all that ice runoff as well creating those incredible roaring rivers as well throughout the whole journey as well so there definitely isn't a bad time for it it's just a case of picking the time for the things you want to see the most me and phil are saying if we ever do this again we're debating doing it in autumn so we can hopefully try and catch those fall colors as well and experience that incredible kind of you know autumnal fun fall colors um, so yeah, guys, I think that's kind of a bit of a top level overview. I know there's, I haven't got into a lot of detail, but that's because there's so much I could talk to. I could be here for another four or five hours. Um, what I do want to say, and I haven't actually loaded this in. So if you give me a second, I'm not sure how easy this is going to be to add in. Uh, let me see if I can find the file quickly. I did just quickly download an example offer. Yeah, I don't know how easy this is going to be to see on screen. Sorry, but I'll quickly try and pop it on if I can get it to load in. But it's just a case of to give you an idea of price. Now, Rocky Mountaineer is a premium product. There's no denying it. It's not going to be the cheapest experience out there for you. And before I went on board, I was a little bit kind of like, is it worth the price? 100% hand on my heart. It is totally worth the price to the point that I would happily pay this again to do this experience again because it was incredible. But this is just the two-day rail journey experience. Now, there are so many different ways you can do this, and I'm going to hopefully explain in the coming weeks the other ways you can do this. But just to do the two-day rail journey, so you kind of join the train on the first day, stay overnight on board in Kamloops, and then get off in the end of the journey, whichever way around you do this, whether you go Vancouver to Banff or Banff to Vancouver. The guide price for Gold Leaf is going to be £2,603. I've just picked a random date, so he's just gone and picked kind of the leading price for that time of the year. So there's no denying that this is a premium product a premium service now this is for gold leaf silver leaf is a little cheaper but honestly there is nothing like this out there where you get to experience this level of service and the sheer you know experience of being on board the rocky mountaineer and again these are going to be the 2024 dates as well um so a get bit of an overview if anybody wants to know a little bit more about this then definitely just send me a message anytime um so you can kind of there's my email on the screen there so send me an email if you are interested in learning a little bit more about kind of doing the rocky mountaineer i can obviously talk a little bit more about kind of the detail about what's going to happen and the things you're going to get to see and answer any questions you may have the thing to keep in mind with rocky mountaineer is there are a myriad of ways you can do it and what a lot of people do is they kind of do it as a bit of a land and sea extension so what they'll do is they will either do a cruise from vancouver or seattle before and then they will then join the, the train and, and end in banff um, and then go on and fly um, home then from maybe like calgary or something like that or they'll do a round trip so they'll fly in and maybe they will do this one um, with the rainforest journey as well so they're doing kind of a five-day train journey with the three overnights on board and then exploring kind of either the Lake Louise and the Banff National Park region, um, or they will go on and explore kind of um, Vancouver and maybe go on and do that area from there. Now, myself and Phil are in the early stages of looking to do a group trip for this. So we are currently looking at early stages for fall 2025. So around about the kind of August, September time, 2025, we are looking to recreate the journey that we did. So we kind of flew into Calgary. We did two nights um, in Banff. We then did the Rocky Mountaineer Banff down to Vancouver, and then we then did a seven night inside passage Alaska cruise as well on board um, uh, on board Holland America. We then came back and we did a couple of days then in Vancouver as well and got to experience kind of everything Vancouver has to offer. It's early stages is because not all of 2025 cruise season is on sale yet, neither is Rocky Mountaineer for 2025, but we are thinking of planning a group trip as well. So you can come and join us and you can kind of be part of our group where there'll be exclusive kind of onboard um, events on board the kind of cruise ship and special events kind of in Banff and in Vancouver as well for you to kind of come along and just join with us and just kind of have a helping hand um, from travel experts of people who've done this journey before, but also our trade partners who are working with us on this as well to kind of get that little bit more of an exclusive experience on board. There was supposed to be a form set up by this time if you were interested in pre-registering, but unfortunately I haven't had time to get that ready yet. So if you are interested, 
interested, send an email to kieran at magical-traveler.com and I'll put you down on the list ready for when we're kind of ready to start talking about it. Hopefully by about September time this year, we should be able to kind of start maybe having that early conversation about if you are interested in booking it. If you do want to book the Rocky Mountaineer in general and you want to have a chat to us about kind of a Canada trip with the Rocky Mountaineer or a Rocky Mountaineer and sea option as well, definitely um, reach out to us um, anytime you'd like. Um, you could got my number there as well, so you can put that in. It is on WhatsApp, so you can send us a WhatsApp message anytime as well, or you can send me an email anytime you'd like as well. Or you can find us on the website as well at magical-traveler.com. What I'm going to do is over the next two weeks, I'm going to do more information about this trip as well. So today I've concentrated on the Rocky Mountaineer. Next week, what I'm going to do is talk about kind of Alaska as a cruise region in general. So I'm going to just talk about kind of all the amazing things you can do on an Alaska cruise and the different ways you can do an Alaska cruise. And then the week following that, I'm going to talk about our experience on doing Alaska with Holland America as well, because they have some unique features uh, if you choose to sail the Alaska region as well with Rocky, with Holland America, sorry. Now, again, we did this as a group. So we did it kind of as a package option where we got to do the kind of Rocky Mountaineer and the sea option as well, which is what we're looking to recreate as well for 2025. However, if you want to join us on that trip as well, you can just do the bits that you want. So if you just want to do the land portion, so come with us to Banff, have a couple of days in Banff, do the Rocky Mountaineer, have a couple of days in Vancouver and then fly home, we can totally do that for you. Or you can do just the cruise portion and not do the Rocky Mountaineer or if you want to do the whole leg with us then we can totally do that as well for you but again drop us an email anytime you want and we can kind of add you to that pre-registration list so that once we're ready to put it on sale you'll be the first people to find out about it the way things are going as well you may actually be involved in curating that trip as well of kind of helping us decide which cruise line to partner with and also which activities we do um kind of once in um Banff National Park but also then as well in Vancouver and possibly what we do after the cruise as well so you could help kind of um, curate that trip with us as well other than that, guys, if you've got any questions about kind of sailing with Rocky, uh, sailing, got cruise on my brain, we're traveling on Rocky Mountaineer or want to know a little bit more about it, then definitely reach out to us. Um, drop us a message in the comments below. If you are on LinkedIn at the moment watching this live, I can't see comments on LinkedIn. I can only see comments on YouTube and Facebook um, whilst I'm actually presenting live. But if you definitely want to know a little bit more about Rocky Mountaineer, then definitely get in touch. I'd love to help you. Other than that, guys, I hope you have a fantastic weekend and I'll see you soon.